Hey everyone, it's George the Antique Nomad and welcome to another fast video where we go through a place that we've been before and look at what's new. And today we are at Kate is Antique Mall in Kate is Kentucky. This place has changed a lot since I was last here. Uh, they've got a bunch of new dealers and they've changed the store, including putting in more walls. And this is the shop that we're in. This place seems like it's got some pretty cool stuff. So let's just start here. In fact, we'll start right at the opening with this piece. This is a coal shuttle. These would have been in most homes, at least anyone that used coal for power and fuel back in the 1800s. You'd put your uh, little bits of coal in there. These were mainly made in England, actually, although this one could be American, but most of them were made in England. They do have this little piece here. The price is only 125, and you can see all the detail and the carving and the brasses. This is gonna be from about 1890. This is actually very similar to a casket handle, believe it or not. Um, so they're a cool thing, and the prices have come way down. They used to sell for twice that, so definitely something interesting to collect if you can find a use. Now, in this space here, they've got some really cool stuff. I love this thing. Um, this is, believe it or not, it looks like maybe an old washing machine, but it is a churn, and this is by the Vermont uh, Machinery Company you can see down there. It is the swing churn because th what you did is instead of having to plunge your butter, you could just swing it back and forth. And there's a, uh, this is made in 1879. Whoops, I put that knob back in. There's a little glass window so you could see the uh, butter solidifying and doing what it's supposed to do in there. And it's got nice painting on it. Uh, they actually made these pretty fancy with a lot of detail because they were very expensive. So they knew you were spending a lot of money on it. So they tried to make them look nice. Eventually, they just became utility items. Uh, this is cool. It's good that it has the key. Old gumball machines do sell. This one is priced at 150 uh, but the fact that it has the key makes a huge difference because people can actually use them again this way. And so that's part of the reason. I think this is, uh, this is similar to an acorn machine, but it doesn't have the acorn on it, so it must be another maker. Uh, let's see what else they have in here that's interesting. I kind of thought uh, some of these old uh, tobacco tins were a neat thing to take a look at here because um, these are more decorative from the time and it just says shredded plug tobacco. This one is the Epicure line, you can see there. Little tobacco tins have been collectible for a very long time. These are priced at about 45 each. You've got commercial ones here as well for Old Chum and Cinco. It really depends on the maker and the brand and the graphics. And of course, the more perfect they are for condition, the more valuable they'll be. I like this little pocket-sized one. That one's $30. So you can tell there is some value to those. Um, let's see what else they have. They have a C and spell. Long before the speak and sell spell, you have this thing. So you would actually flip it, and then I think you're supposed to spell the item. I don't know exactly. There we go. And you spell it, and then you can open it up and see if you actually spelled it right. So this is a baby boomer toy from the early 50s by Wolverine, which was out of Michigan. And the idea, of course, was to teach you all sorts of wonderful things that you would need to know someday. So, oh, and this is really neat, this old dartboard. I haven't seen one this old in a long time. This one is priced at 65, which I think is actually a pretty good deal because it is so decorative. I would say this dates to sometime around um, 19, 10, let's see, there's a patent number. This is gonna be 1930s. Um, so that's a neat piece. People love the old game boards like this to hang on the walls. You see Chinese checkerboards selling, even if they don't have the marbles. It's definitely a decorating theme that people are liking now because it gives a big color splash and it's not terribly expensive compared to like a piece of art or something. Um, let's go this way because I, there's something around the corner here that is from a completely different era that's actually very good. And that is this set here. This is Franciscan Starburst pattern. And it's interesting to me that we are seeing Starburst in these uh, types of uh, areas because it was made in 1955. Uh, the reason that we see it in Kentucky is because in the 50s, Paducah actually had a plant involved with the Atomic Energy uh, Commission. And so you see this sort of atomic thing around here sometimes, and it's usually related to people who came during that boom. Prices on these, 80 to 85 on the platters, around 50 on dinner plates, 40 on salads, 70 for the creamer and sugar, and 15 for the cup and saucer. And that's why this is a good pattern for you to look for 
uh, because it is very, very collectible. That's the mark. It also could have a round mark that says Franciscan. There was a Japanese knockoff, but you will be able to tell pretty easily. And while we're going on to our next place, I just wanted to say thank you so much for uh, watching this video. Uh, please do click the thumbs up button to let us know that you liked it. And please also um, subscribe if you haven't, and that way you, when you uh, click the bell, you can be notified of future videos. So we will have more to show you here. Um, let's come on down here. I think these are worth showing because people do find this, this federal glass, and it's called the moon glow pattern, and it has this iridescence, but this is later than most iridescent glass. This is 1960s vintage, um, so it has that great shine on it, and they're really neat to look at. There's the federal mark on the bottom, the big F in the shield is the mark that they would have used at about that time, if you can get that. There we go. Um, so this is definitely something that is collectible. They're asking 55 for this set. I have to say personally, because the iridescence is sprayed on, I would not want to eat off of it. That's just my personal bias, but it's something to consider definitely. Um, oh yes, they've repurposed a bunch of old stuff into all sorts of various hanging art and wind chimes, birdhouse, yes. It is really fun to see what people will invent uh, with old things. And it's nice because, you know, there's a lot of silverware hanging around looking for something to do with itself. Um, this plant, this lamp here at 95 is a pretty good price. This is Capo de Monte, and this is 1950s or 60s era with this very elegant finial. Uh, probably more likely to be 50s, actually, with the base there. And you see the cutouts are all through the ceramic piece as well. It's all hand-painted. Very popular after the Second World War here in the United States, so you will run into these. I love this thing. This is a blue glass table. It's priced at 65. The blue mirror was very popular in the 1930s. Now, it's hard to find not scratched, and it does start to lose silvering around the edge, so you have to check condition on these. The other problem is that they tend to get loose. So this one for 65 is a fair price, but you'd have to do a little bit to it. Uh, but it's such a great look, and people really do like those. If it was in really good shape, it could sell for three digits, I would say. Uh, let's see, let's move on down the hall here, because there's some neat stuff across from here. These two big floor bases, are really well priced for the size because they're Hager and they've actually reduced the price quite a bit on this. They have only 65. I honestly think the original 110 price is a price that would sell it in the right place. There's the Hager label. This is going to be sometime in the 1980s when these big sort of, um, uh, they're knockoffs of the Bauer oil jars of the 1930s. So these very large architectural pieces. Hager sold a lot to furniture stores in the 1980s and 90s. This one has been marked down to 48, also a Hager, also with the label. So those I think a pretty good deal for the money. Um, here is something I like to show because for me, I don't buy the stuff that says Disney typically because that's after the mid 80s. If it says Walt Disney Productions, then I'm in. And that's just where I have decided to draw the line on my Disney stuff. I know some of the newer stuff sells, but nonetheless. Groovy lamp up here. This is priced at $125. Look at the orange inserts made of plastic. So they've got Lucite inserts in this very, very orange lamp. It is possible that Hager made this ceramic for this lamp. It doesn't say uh, there were other companies in California doing this as well. Um, so it could be one of theirs. There we go. No harm, no foul. Yes, the furry cats. Yes, she's got glasses and she's her kitties have fur. These are Miller Studio and the nice thing about Miller Studio is they typically put their name on the side somewhere where you can see it, but not necessarily on these smaller pieces. So this one is only $4.50. It would have originally been a part of a bigger set, so would this one. This one says 1967 Miller Studio, and on this one we can show it pretty easily because it's right there on the edge. Miller Studio did a lot of these chalkware plaque sets for several decades, actually, so there's a lot of variety in them. And I just have to try to get that to go back on the wall. There we go. 
And I really like this set too. It's just simple Japanese porcelain made in Japan. Not any big deal. But the styles are so cute. They were definitely 1970s flower poppy. Um, this one is the entire set for $58 and it's got the cream and sugar. And again, we don't know a maker on this. I don't think the maker necessarily matters. I think it's more about the style. We also have a, another teapot with the baskets, same era here, priced at 18. And then here's the flower cart set of stacking cups that would have gone with it. And they are priced at $32 for the set. And you can see they have their original avocado green bale. So these are right about 1970. Um, all cute things, they are things that are not going to have a label. You're not going to necessarily say, oh, that's a left-in or that's important because it's made by somebody, but it doesn't really have to do with that. It's really just more about the look and the style. And coming back here, there is a bunch of the Corel and a bunch of the Pyrex and patterns that we see a lot of, the Spice of Life. This one is Friendship here. And we've got... Uh, Bunch of the Corel wear, including the Ivy, which is starting to be popular again. Corel made dozens and dozens and dozens of different patterns on Corel wear. So there's a lot that people are just starting to be aware of. And I think that that'll be an exciting area to see how that develops in terms of what people want to collect now that Corning does not make glass anymore. Um, coming this way, there's something that I'll show you real quickly. But first, I wanted to say, uh, if you are interested in helping support the channel in a greater way, uh, well, we're always very grateful for that. We've got memberships that are available on a couple of different levels with various perks, including early access to videos, bonus videos, um, we also have a Patreon, and if you um, subscribe to our Patreon at any level that you want, it could be as little as a dollar a month, um, you will have early access to other bonus videos that we're doing. So, um, check that out. There's a join button below or a link in the description that says memberships. Okay, well, let's see what we have here. These are Fostoria's American Lady. You notice the base looks like Fostoria American, but this was their chance in the 1970s to do colored pieces that could go with the American, but actually had this splash of color rather than being all one color. And so American Lady was what they called this particular line. The little sherbets here are $40 for the set. Around the same time Fostoria was making the Jamestown pattern, you can see the label in this one. Uh, Jamestown is this with a twist. This is actually a different pattern. Uh, but these pieces sell for about $10 to $12 each. But what I really wanted to show you is up here because this is a good lesson in head vases. This is a reproduction. And there's a lot of ways you can tell. First of all, she has a very glossy glaze compared to an old one. Secondly, no tarnish at all. The gold is brand new, so it couldn't have been sitting out in the air for 60 years. And then we look at the bottom. Well, first of all, they faked a Nippon mark. Head vases were not made when Nippon was made, so right there we know that's a fake. And if you compared this to a real Noritake mark, you'd see that the M in the middle is not right. There's just everything about this is not correct. Here's another one that's also a fake. And again, you see that fake mark there, so do not pay $69 for these. Okay, let's see what else can we show folks. Uh, they've got a lot of lighting stuff here, and I'm going to kind of breeze by it as we go out, but uh, they actually do have some replacement parts and things, which makes this a somewhat useful place for people who are trying to put together, like say you need a base for an old Aladdin lamp. Well, they've got, these are reproductions, but you can get a new base for the bottom of your Aladdin lamp if it got broken in just about any color they made. Okay, let's see what's in here. These pieces are Louisville stoneware. This is the pottery company that has survived in Louisville. Um, Mary Hadley went out of business, but this is the original, and Louisville stoneware is still going. They do a lot of really fun, colorful pieces. Uh, there are some people who just collect their Christmas related. This is 32 for this plate. This one, the fruit of the spirit is love, $24 for the bowl, and there's our mark on the back. You can tell this is later because it says it's oven, microwave, freezer, and dishwasher safe, 2004. The good thing is even their old stuff is all of those things. And then they also did the Noah's Ark plate, and this one's a pretty collectible piece. This is priced at $28. 
So they do a lot of juvenile wear, but they also do a lot of things that are specific uh, to particular things that people like to do. If you're a tennis player, here's this mug for $6, for example. And so they make a lot of interesting things. And definitely their older stuff that's out of production is very collectible with collectors. Now back in here we see Pyrex, and we will come back to that. Um, so in the meantime, I am George the Antique Nomad. Thank you so much for watching. Uh, please do check out the social media and links in the description, and we will be back with more of these kind of uh, videos where we try to do a few deeper dives into a few specific things and give you some up-to-date pricing information on what people are looking for in the retail market. Thanks for watching, and bye for now.